Hey dudes, it's Marty from Needlebutt Farms and today we're going to do a hive inspection. We're going to do it from the bottom up just so it kind of makes sense and it'll help you if you're making nukes or if you're doing splits or something like that. So what you're going to need is you're going to need your hive tool and your smoker. So when you're going out, you're going to have your smoker lid, you're going to have your hive tool with you. You're going to do this. You're going to give them a little puff on the front. Just whoosh, whoosh. And that's all they need. So you'll know you did it right because the bees are going to go bananas. They'll be like, Wah! oh my God, everything is on fire. And then what they're going to do is they're going to go gorge honey, which means they're just going to eat a bunch of it. And then they're going to chill out. So it's going to be like, whoa, and then nothing. And that's how you know you did it, right? So what happens is they eat the honey and it just kind of chills them out because their biology tells them, hey, the hive is on fire. We got to go. But then when there's no fire, they're like, okay, well, I'm kind of full, so I'm just going to take a nap. But they're not actually napping. Don't let them fool you. So you give them their little puff, and if you need it, you'll kind of open the back. And if there's a ton of beads, you can give them another little puff, close it up, wait like 10 seconds, and you're good. So I'm going to open it up. So first and foremost, this right here is your telescoping lid. So it's metal on top wood in the middle and what is important about that is the metal on top is going to get hit with sunlight in the early morning and it's going to radiate heat throughout your hive and that's really important because the bees are almost like heat activated when it's too cold they just kind of chill out and they take naps but once it warms up that's when they go it's time to go out and do some bee stuff so that's what's important about your top lid so we're going to put that off to the side and then now you're to your inner cover. And so the inner cover is actually pretty neat because what it does is it helps with moisture and it helps the bees to feel more protected. And it's just going to make it a lot less weird in your hive. So you're going to get this with your hive. So what you'll notice about this first is it should be flat on one side and concave on the other side. And what's important about that is the concave side needs to go up. And that's because if you flip it over like this and you get it wrong, your bees come out to protect this and they're gonna do it as you're closing up the hive and wow, you just smash like 10 bees and you're gonna feel real bad. It's just a terrible thing. I hate smashing bees. So also what's important about that is if you put the concave side down, the bees are going to try and make honeycomb in this room because it's enough space between the lid and the tops of the boxes for them to make honeycomb. So you're gonna pick this up, honeycomb everywhere, honey's everywhere. Now you're the jerk because you just, you messed up their whole process. So we'll just skip being the jerk for now because nobody likes being the jerk. So we're gonna put that off to the side and we're gonna keep going. So when you've got your hive tool, you're gonna come in here and you're gonna try and get them under the edges and you're gonna hear a little pop, which is fine. It's gonna go like, Every time you do it, it's going to sound like that. And what that is, is that's the propolis just tearing away. It's not a big deal. It actually, once you put them back together, it pretty much sticks itself back together. It's like nature's super glue. It's a pretty cool thing. So when you're doing your inspection, you'll be like, and you'll come in here and you want to just have a positive attitude because you're going to be thinking about something. You might as well be thinking positive. So you'll be like, whoa, cool. Wow, ladies, you're doing so great. So I like to give them a little bit of, you know, positive reinforcement in case they're feeling a little down about themselves, they're feeling a little overweight or something. Wow, you guys look great. You're doing such great work. And then you'll keep going across. So what you're probably going to notice is the middle ones are going to have a lot of brood. And so brood patterning is cool. Some people get weird about what shape it should be. Don't worry about that. Just make sure there's brood in the middle. So what brood is, is it's the latest evolution of a bee. So you're going to have larvae, you're gonna have the pupae, you're gonna have them closed up in their little cocoon, and that's what brood is. So you're gonna look at it, and it'll be somewhere in the middle. Sometimes it's a circle, sometimes it's the entire frame, which people get real psyched about. Mine normally look like real thick rainbows that almost take up the entire thing. And then in the top corners, my other bees will go in and fill it up with honey or nectar or pollen. And that's cool too. Don't worry so much about that. Just make sure you've got all the elements of a bee in there. So the other thing you're gonna be looking for when you're going across 
you're going to be looking for the queen. So you're going to open it up and be like, oh my god, there's the queen. She's huge. It's a compliment. You're not calling her fat. Call her fat all you want. She really doesn't speak English. So another thing is normally, at least in all of my hives, maybe not yours, all bees are a little different, is on the sides it's going to be honey. So you're going to notice when you're doing your inspection that it's honey on the outside and bees in the middle, and that's fine. It's probably insulation. There's a reason that they do it, um, but that's how they do it for me. So then, also what I have is I've got this feeder in here. So a feeder is really important because what you're gonna do is you're gonna put sugar water in there. And so that sugar water, which will be about half and half, half sugar, half water, it'll make a good syrup, a good thick syrup. It's good to help the bees when there's not a lot of food out. So when you'll use this is either in early spring or when you're doing a split or maybe when you get in your brand new nuke box, ask the person you're getting the bees from, they'll be able to tell you. But you might end up using a feeder, but don't use it all the time because if you leave a feeder in there all the time, what's going to happen is your bees are going to get used to there being a feeder and they're gonna do what bees do. They're going to take that syrup and they're gonna make honey out of it, which sounds like you're about to invent something real cool, but it's actually terrible because what happens is they take that syrup and they make honey out of it and it's disgusting. Like it tastes gross and it's not really good for you because what it is, is it's just sugar water. So really you're just giving somebody some high fructose corn syrup. It has none of the benefits of honey. It has a little bit of the enzymes, but it doesn't have pollen or nectar, the stuff that helps with allergies. So you don't want to do that, but also the bees are really good at foraging. So when you have a really developed beehive, you'll have 60,000 bees. So there's 60,000 bees just flying out and bringing stuff in. You don't have to worry about them. And really what you're doing is you're depriving them of space for like two more frames. So you see I took that out? We're gonna put two frames in there. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'd rather have another frame of honey and another frame of bees than two feet, like a feeder in there that's taking up all that space. But anyway, so that's what you're going to be looking for during your inspection. That's some of the parts that you're going to need in your first box. And then what I also have is I have this. This is called an entrance reducer. So the entrance reducer is really important because what it does is it makes it where your bees don't have to defend so much space. So when you get a nuke box or a split, it's really helpful because the bees only have to defend that little area. Because if you think about it, a full beehive of 60,000-ish bees only needs this big area. So really, reducing it down to this isn't hurting your bees any. All it's doing is helping them. So I normally take the entrance reducer out about when I'm ready to put on a new box. And so you'll know that you're ready to put on a new box when about 75% of this is full of anything. It can be full of honey, full of bees, full of whatever. So you'll notice that most of it has different stages of bee, uh, the bee cycle. And uh, once it's 75% full, you'll put on another box. So I use two deeps. You'll put this on, you'll come in here about every 10 days, so don't forget to do your inspections because these are your bees now, so you've got to take care of them. You'll want to make sure that you got it lined up pretty well. Sometimes it won't fit perfect, but just make sure that it's not raining in the hive. That's kind of a jerk move. So you'll do this and you'll have two more frames in here. You'll have it all fold up. So I like to use spacers, it helps me keep bee space. If you're interested in bee space, I have another video on that. So, um, but that's really good. And so you'll come out here every couple weeks and you'll be like, wow, these bees are doing so great. And eventually the magic will happen. You'll notice that this is all full and this is when it gets fun. Then you'll start using smaller boxes. So these are called supers. So they're either called super boxes or medium frames or whatever you want to call them really. They're all the same thing. So I guess just know that they're called supers and mediums. 
They're the same thing that can be used interchangeably. But what's cool about this is these two boxes here, the queen should stay in these bottom two boxes and leave this top box alone. But occasionally you'll have a bee that's a little over ambitious. So I had one of these queens this year. And what she started doing was she started laying some eggs right here. And that's a problem because these are supposed to be only honey. So if there's eggs and stuff in it, when you get to the extraction portion, you're smashing eggs and now you got bee guts and like developing bee parts all in your honey and nobody wants that. You just want pure honey. So if you're having that issue, what you can get is a queen excluder. So I don't really use a queen excluder except for this year I had to use one so my only queen excluder is outside. But basically what a queen excluder is, is it's a screen and it's big enough that the regular worker bees can come in and do their stuff and they'll, they'll still fill this up with honey. But it's small enough where that queen with the big butt can't get through. So she'll come up, be like, oh, can't make it. I'll just go back down and do whatever queen stuff I was already doing. So you might need a queen excluder and that'll help you to keep this pure honey. And this is when it gets exciting. You'll notice in uh, probably sometime around May is a honey flow is what it's called. And that's when all the flowers are blooming and they're full and all the bees are going out, taking all the pollen, taking all the nectar, bringing it back. You're gonna see an explosion of growth and you're gonna see all your stuff fill up. So you'll do this and probably two, maybe three weeks later, you'll come out, you'll check it out and be like, whoa, they've already filled it up again. And you'll be like, wow, great job, ladies. That's what I do. I just did it actually. Then you'll come back out here and you'll line these suckers up real good. You'll be like, all right, cool, I'll see you in a couple days. And then at the end of your inspection, you're going to come back. You're going to put the lid on. You're going to put this on. To clarify, you're always going to put the lid on at the end of your inspection, but I'm just helping us move through time without putting it on every time. So you're gonna put your lid on and then you'll come out in a couple weeks and this one will be full. And that's when the fun starts. That's when we get to the honey harvest time. And I'm gonna make another totally separate video once that time comes and we're gonna have a great time getting there. Anyways, you guys rock. Thanks for checking out my videos. If you like them, like them. If you wanna see more, subscribe. It helps me out. Like if you guys are doing that, I know that you wanna see more videos. If you don't want to see any more videos, just don't do it and I won't make any more. All right, dudes. Well, thanks.